It's Saturday, the 4th of January, 2020. It's 7.08 a.m. presently. Very few people are going to work this morning, but there are some, including me. Part of the nine days vacation deal, we have to offer six days of work, which was three days before Christmas and three, day, three days after the holidays. Which for me is actually two days because uh, I took a Tuesday, a Thursday, I took Thursday off as a sick day and they give it to me. My co-worker, uh, my boss, is pretty good on this. I, I, I actually, I really appreciate that. So yesterday I went to the other electronic store and I got uh, most of the part that I needed. So the last thing I need is a box, which is a wooden box, which I'm gonna go look at two different places tonight, this afternoon when I finish working. I'm gonna try to finish early so I can start building this, building these device. I wanna make at least three of the same so it doesn't take very long to build it's just that it needs the I need I need to do the effort to do it people paid for that already so I have to do it it's the least of thing and it's uh, delivering good product because I want to make it very awesome plus I have to paint those box Last time when I talk about uh, pulse width modulation, that was an insight that uh, one of the uh, recurring character in my dreams come very often. Uh, for me, I've been practicing uh, dream dream explorer for a very long part of my life, and. Uh, at one point, I, I came so experimented and, and dream exploring that my skills got higher and higher for times, and I could do everything I want. And at one point, I tried I tried to start focusing on meeting other people from other dimension in the dream world. And uh, there are characters that are that started to become more recurrent. When I, when I eat different things, uh, the chemical balance in the dream and my brain at night makes me have certain dreams. And uh, one recurrent character is an alien that I met multiple times. And each time I met him or it, uh, it gave me insight on what I needed to do. The first time around I met him, he explained to me how anti-gravity was made, how we could achieve, how we could achieve anti-gravity, and then uh, the second time around when I came, he explained to me the combination of time travel, what was required to make time travel possible, and he was explaining to me that there were indeed multiple ways to time travel. The fabric of reality is not as tangible as we think it is it's uh it's more malleable than we can imagine and uh, time travel is not as impossible as some science wants to make it to be job 
from Monday to Friday and being tired every weekend. I've been working for 30 years almost and uh, I'm thoroughly tired of this. I want to devote myself to this project and uh, make it happen thoroughly. And uh, I, like I always say is before, and I say it many times, all I need is 1.5 years. Not 25, not 30, but 1.5 years. And uh, on the scale that I, uh, I want to make things, that's where it takes times. Because just making certain parts of the project will take two to three months per piece. about the time portal one thing came to my mind is that the moment you power it up the portal works not as a one-way direction but as a two-way so what happened is that when you turn it on from my theory when you turn it on you can tra you can time travel as far as it continue to exist so wherever you set shop and you open the time portal if you're gonna stay there for five years you're gonna be able to travel five years in the future then you're gonna have to move to somewhere else and uh, if you set it up to somewhere where it's it's powered all the time and it's not gonna be destroyed by nature or any natural catastrophe then it can be there indefinitely. All it is basically, it's a huge coil transformator. It's a, but it's the rest of the component that, that might not last as long. So you can only you can only you can only travel as far as the machine's on. Ron Mallet wanted to do that with laser, a, tu a tunnel of laser that was the same principle of what I just said. But the thing is like, he only see it the physical way. He didn't see it any other ways. He didn't. I don't think that he searched very long and hard or anything like this because when I wrote to him about all of these plans and all of these ideas, he, he turned me down. He stopped communicating with me. He said, you're not a physicist. You don't know nothing. But, uh, I turned around and I told him, no, I'm a researcher. And of course I know everything. Because I researched the entire topic from A to Z. I spent many years doing this. I've been, at, I've been at this for more than 20 years. So, and you, you, you've, you're you you're a teacher. You, you haven't done anything with your hand. You didn't experiment anything. You just started to build and you just started doing experimentation. It's, uh, it's surprising me that Kaku and Neil deGrasse and Tyson uh, didn't come to you and uh, shut you up. But there was money to be made. Uh, all of these guys, it's always about the money, you know. Um, Mitchell Kaku, when a channel invited him to ask him over or question him about physics or anything like this, it's usually it's about 25 grand a piece. So when you see him on the news, the moment he's there, that's 25 grand right there. He doesn't do jack shit for free. And, uh, same thing with the grassy. Uh, they're all there for the money. And uh, they usually don't do much. Surprisingly, it's uh, to me, here in Quebec, we have these uh, science lab that are funded by the government and uh, I went two or three times over there and I look at them and I, I look at the work they're doing and it's it's always amazed me that the electric company Hydro-Quebec know more about the physics of electricity, magnetism and transforming currents than the student and the science lab where we pay millions of dollars every year 
and it, it's amazed me that why do, what, what do we pay you for exactly waste people money you know what are you doing exactly do you yield any result to improve society where's it's 2020 where's our flying car it's it's always amazed me that science always claim all these things that they do but you never see jack shit popular science uh, Boeing uh, decided to make uh, anti-gravity device for their plane they wanted their plane not to have to rely on uh, wheels and drivetrain and the scientists at NASA joined with Boeing and they started making uh, levitating with electricity And at one point, they succeeded in creating a floating uh, base, which was like a sort of a repulsion device. And the repulsion device was working from uh, 100 to 100,000 volt. But at very, like, at practically no amperage. It didn't need amperage. There was no amp needed. It was just like low, uh, like a kilovolt that didn't require amperage. And it was working. It, it, it would have been a viable device to make the airplane land. And uh, but the thing is that they would have to be sure that they control the plane as they're landing because there is no directionals. The thing just floats. Period. And uh, if the if this this device was taking twice the space of a regular landing train. So it wasn't a viable idea, but they did create an they did create create an anti gravity, more like a repulsion device, but it was anti gravity nonetheless. And uh, they never tell to the public, they never show it up, they never tell the public, they never did anything about it. They just spent how many million dollars of public money, and they never did anything about it. Any furthermore. This is to show like science and big companies and stuff like this. They will do things, but they will never tell anyone. Anyway, I'm at to work. I'm at work right now, and uh, I'll catch you guys later. Uh, it's gonna be a very short day off tomorrow. So take care, everyone.